Hey guys, it's Tiffany. Today, we're gonna talk about transformations. Compound transformations. Some things to keep in mind. There are four main types of transformations. A translation is when you slide a shape or figure from one place to another on the coordinate plane. A reflection is when you reflect a shape or figure to a new place. The end result will look like two images mirroring each other. A rotation is when you turn a figure so that it's facing a different direction. A dilation is when a figure is enlarged or shrunken to a smaller size. A pre-image is the name of the figure that you start out with. The image is the name of the figure which is made after the pre-image has been moved. It's the figure that you end up with. Let's take a look at a compound transformation example. This particular example has several steps that it wants us to go through. First, it wants us to identify the points on the pre-image. So again, you can just make those up. There's no right or wrong to it. I'm gonna call this my point A, this is my point B, Point C is here, and this is point D. Step two wants us to reflect it across the x-axis and label and identify the new points. So if I were to reflect this across the x-axis, that means it's gonna go up and it's gonna look backwards. It's gonna be like reversed. So I'm gonna start by counting and I can see that my A is two spaces away from the x-axis. So that means it's gonna be two spaces away from the x-axis again when we reflect it, but in the opposite direction. So this will be my A prime. I'm gonna do the same thing for B now. It's two spaces away from the x-axis, so it's gonna be two spaces away going up. This will be B prime. Now as far as C goes, I can see that it's four spaces away. I need to make sure I stay on the same line where my C is, which is at the point x equals three, but go up four spaces. So one, two, three, four. This is my C prime point. And my D prime is going to be along the point X equals one, but it's gonna be four spaces up like the C prime. One, two, three, four. Now I'm gonna connect those points to create my new shape. Here's my new shape. Now the second part of part two asks us to ID the new points. So since we've already labeled the points with A prime, B prime, C prime, and D prime, I'm gonna think that ID means clarify what the ordered pairs are. So for A prime, I can see that I'm at the point two comma two. B prime, I can see that I'm at the point four comma two. C prime, I can see that I'm at the point three comma four. And D prime, I can see that I'm at the point one comma four. Now I'm gonna move on to step three. Step three says translate the new image five units to the left and three units down. Then label and ID the new points. All right, so I'm gonna start with my A prime point and go from that to my new A. So I'm gonna start with my A prime point and go from here to my new area. So it says I need to move five units to the left and three units down. So I'm gonna go over five, one, two, three, four, five, and three units down, one, two, three. This is my next A. Now this part gets a little tricky. Now sometimes you will see a textbook or something say, when you're doing compound transformations, you're gonna call the first one prime, the first A that you write down after your original shape prime. And the second one might be like a double prime. So you have like a two. But sometimes a book or a worksheet or whatever you're looking at might say, okay, well, since it's a compound transformation, you only label the very last shape in your transformation process as the prime and all of the other points in between were just kind of like go-to areas. So this is what I'll do. I'll just label my A in the multiple prime fashion, but the other ones will just remain regular primes. So this A is my double prime. Now I need to move my B prime. 
one, two, three, four, five, and down three. One, two, three. It's right here. Now I need to move my C prime. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. And finally my D prime. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Now if I fill in those four points, I get my shape and it looks like this. Now to finish out part three, I need to identify what these ordered pairs are. So I'm gonna say my A double prime is at the point negative three, negative one. I'm gonna say my B prime is at the point negative one, negative one. My C prime is at the point negative two, one. And my D prime is at the point negative four, one. Now I'm gonna finish up with part four. It says rotate the new image, that means the last image we just finalized, the one with the purple points. Rotate the new image 270 degrees around the origin. Label and ID the new points of this final image. So when I need to do this, I'm gonna consider the fact that the origin is right here at the point zero zero. And I'm gonna say, how far away is my shape from that? And I can see that if I'm considering the, sh the point that's the closest to it, I'm dealing with the B prime here. It's only one box away. So I can rotate that shape 90 degrees, which isn't where we need to end up, but it's part of the way around the origin. And I would end up here, and this would be my B prime point again. Then I'm gonna rotate it again, and this wouldn't be where we end either because it's only 180 degrees around. And then I would rotate it one more time to end up at the 270 mark. If you look at this at a quick glance, you might think, oh, that was a full rotation around. No, it's not. You're ending up in this quadrant, not this quadrant. If you were to rotate one more time, then it would have been a full rotation. So, so if you end in this quadrant over here, then that means you've made a 270 degree rotation. Now I know where my B prime is gonna be right here for my final shape. What I need to do is figure out where the rest of the parts are gonna be. Like when I draw this shape in, do I need to draw the line going out this way to the left? Should it go up or what? Like, how is it gonna look? It's sometimes it's a little confusing once you rotate it, like which direction is it gonna be facing, okay? And what you could do to help yourself out here is you could say, well, let me get my reference marker for my A point as well, because that'll help me know how to connect my A and my B line. So I could say that from the origin to my A point, I have a long skinny rectangle, which is made up of three squares. Then when I rotate that, my A would end up being down here. And then when I rotate that again, my A would end up being over here. And I didn't clarify this, but it's at these points. This is the A, this is the A. And then you're gonna rotate it one more time over here. Three boxes. And this is your A, and this is the prime again, actually and this would end up being a triple prime. Now, as you can see, when I do that, I end up with something that looks sort of like a windmill. That means we're on the right track. Now I can tell that from my B mark to my A mark, that this is gonna be the same as this line. Okay, I'm just scribbling on it so you understand which line I'm referring to. Now my D and my C, if you're struggling to draw the shape in, like if you're confused, like, hey, does the shape go out this way? or does the shape go out this way? If that confuses you, you could do the exact same thing we just did with the which, which made the windmill shape. But if you can see it, you can just draw it right in. So because I can see it, I'm gonna say, well, this is the shorter por portion at the bottom of that shape. And then my C and my D, they're not exactly in line with the A and the B, they're slightly off one, but two boxes up. So it's like up two boxes and over one, this is gonna be your C prime. And then over two, this is gonna end up being your D prime. So then you can connect those four points and you're gonna get your final shape. So part four wanted us to rotate the new image 270 degrees around the origin and label and ID the new points of the final image. We have labeled the points, but we have not identified them. Let's do that part right now. I have my A triple prime at the point negative one, three. Then I have my B prime at the point negative one, positive one. And then I have my C prime at the point one comma two. 
Then I have my D prime at the point one comma four. Now, I know this is starting to look a little messy, so I'm gonna go ahead and erase everything except for our shapes and the points that I named. Now I can see a little more clearly what happened. I started out with the pre-image here, and then after I completed step two, I ended up with a reflection here. Then I translated the shape to here, and finally I rotated it 270 degrees around the origin and I ended up with my final shape here. This is my image. But technically you could argue that the other two are your images as well. They're just not your final answer, your final image. Now let's take a recap. There are four main types of transformations. A translation is when you slide a shape or figure from one place to another on the coordinate plane. A reflection is when you reflect a shape or figure to a new place. The end result will look like two images mirroring each other. A rotation is when you turn a figure so that it's facing a different direction. A dilation is when a figure is enlarged or shrunken to a smaller size. A pre-image is the name of the figure that you start out with. The image is the name of the figure which is made after the pre-image has been moved. It's the figure that you end up with. Now you try. Comment with the correct answer below, then head over to my website to see if your answer is correct. Rotate this image 90 degrees around the origin and then reflect it across the x-axis. Then I want you to clarify what the A prime value would be for your final image. SuperEasyMath.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Did you find this video helpful? You can support this channel by donating to Super Easy Math through PayPal. There's a link to it in the description section below this video and on the Super Easy Math YouTube cover photo.